Um, NHS funding is allocated out to PCTs according to a national formula. Um, it gives you an amount of money for every person who lives in Stockport or is registered with a GP in Stockport. And it's weighted according to things like the age of your population or deprivation in the population. Stockport gets around 450 million for 290,000 people who live in the borough. Um, so that's about £1,500 per person, and we spend at the rate of one and a quarter million pounds a day. Um, the thing about the health service is it's, it's obviously part of our greater welfare state, um, and we rely on the many not spending anything in order to fund the care of the few who then happen to need it. Um, as we get older, we tend to rely more on the NHS. We will get more things wrong with us as we age. We'll quite often have several things wrong with us, which means we'll be regularly visiting the GP and possibly regularly going to hospital. Um, and also, if we're unlucky and we do have something major wrong with us, such as we have a bad accident or we um, get cancer, that's very, very expensive. And the costs of that one person has relied on a large proportion of the population not requiring healthcare at all. Um, I've got some examples of costs, um, you know, quite common procedures, say a hip replacement is about £5,000, a knee replacement is about £6,000, and as we age, many of us will need maybe two of each of those as, as we get older. Um, we do about 9,000 orthopaedic procedures a year, um, and over half of those are actually as a result of an accident, so it's not the wear and tear of, of getting older, it will be something like a fall. Um, Cancer is very expensive to treat and obviously we need to be able to do that very quickly. Um, on average, cancer costs £15,000 per patient per year to treat. Obviously some will be very expensive and, and some will be quite a lot less than that. Um, but even something as common as, say, asthma will cost several hundred pounds a year just for inhalers for people to be able to manage that condition. So when you start to think about these things, it really does start to mount up. And what we need is people not to spend the money when they don't need it in order to make sure it's available for the people who do. And it's likely that we're all going to need it at some point in our lives, particularly as we get older. Um, we all know the, the state of public funds at the moment. It's been in the news a lot, particularly around the election. And we all need to do our bit to try and save the money, to help us sort out the debt problem, but also make sure we can spend the money where we really need it. The main thing the public can do to keep costs down is to stay healthy for as long as possible. Sounds obvious, um, and it's also something that people will want to do for themselves rather than just because it saves money. Um, the main factors are all the things that everybody probably knows, which is don't smoke, um, drink only in moderation, eat healthily, take exercise regularly. Um, you can see the impact on cancer of, of stopping smoking. You know, lung cancer rates have dropped considerably, but what you can see from the cancer statistics is just as quickly as lung cancer has dropped, cancers associated with alcohol are on a really steep increase. And one of the things that you do find is when people do stop smoking, they do tend to increase their alcohol intake and actually they're exposing themselves to, to risks such as liver cancer. So we can see significant increases in those and in a healthy lifestyle is very, very important. What we're planning to do is a separate podcast that will help people understand things about living a healthy lifestyle. Um, if people are ill, we would encourage them to use the most cost-effective form of treatment. And that's not just because of the money aspect of it, but it's because parts of the NHS do specialise in particular areas. Um, what we are finding is going to the accident and emergency department for all sorts of illnesses is becoming the treatment of choice for an awful lot of people. And actually, that's not the best thing for you if it isn't an accident or an emergency. Um, we would encourage people, where possible, to think about things like NHS direct self-medication, um, talking to your pharmacist, and of course there's always your GP. And people can underestimate the value you get from your GP knowing you and your family as he builds up a, a history of things that have happened to you in the past. And it is actually better for you to go to your GP if you can, even if that means waiting a day for an appointment rather than just walking into the, the accident and emergency department. We have been lucky in Stockport in that we haven't had any major issues with urgent cases being held up because accident emergency is blocked with non-urgent cases. But that's because we put a lot of money into providing that very expensive service. 
and we would really ask the public to try and avoid going to A&E if at all possible and also to avoid dialing 999 and calling up for an ambulance. One of the things we do recognise though is that at the point at which you are ill is not the point at which you can take time to make rational decisions about where you should go to be best taken care of. So we would really encourage people to understand the Choose Well campaign now when they're not ill so that when the time arises they're more likely to make the right choice and go to the right place. Um, there's information on that on northwest.nhs.uk and if you just put Choose Well into the search engine there you'll get a lot more information um, and it will refer you to NHS Direct, the sorts of things you could use your pharmacist for and then the sorts of things that really are alarm bells and you should be calling 999 and getting yourself straight down to the hospital. Uh, it's an interesting area because by definition the bill for drugs up is almost bound to grow um, as we have more research and development from the pharmaceutical companies they can cure more things they can help manage more conditions and of course that's great um, the process that new drugs will go through is the organization called NICE will assess the clinical effectiveness of the drugs and look at the cost of the drugs and then recommend whether they should be used or not but it isn't an ever-growing bill all the time um, because things drop off what's called patent. Um, the drug companies will spend an awful lot of money on research and development and testing, most of which is wasted because it's a, a process of trial and error. And in order to protect them and encourage them to do that, when they do invent something that works, they're allowed to have it under patent for up to 20 years, which means no one else can manufacture it. At that point, that drug is very expensive because they're recovering all of their costs. Once the 20 years is up, other manufacturers can come in, the competition means the costs are driven down, the research and development is being recovered and the drug drops to the cost of manufacturing it. Um, in the next few years there are a lot of drugs that are coming up to the end of their patent and it does mean the NHS will be able to save an awful lot of money. What it means to patients is their pill might be a slightly different shape, it might be a different colour, it might have a different name and obviously people are wary about changing from something that they've used for a long term condition for a long time. So we would say talk to your GP but understand that if it is a question of it will save an awful lot of money and it's exactly the same treatment, please support your GP in actually having that prescription changed because it does free up the money to allow us to invest in other services. Conditions such as asthma, diabetes, COPD, um, they're conditions that people will have for life and we will be paying for their treatment um, year after year. However, they can understand their condition well and understand the things that impact their condition. And whilst a diabetic will always need their insulin, if they manage their condition as well as they can, they won't need regular admission to hospital if something goes wrong. So it's really important that they take the time to discuss with their GP or other health workers their condition so they understand their condition, understand the impact their lifestyle has on their condition and manage it as much as possible. Yes, great, it saves costs, but we also find from patients that they feel much more in control and have a much better quality of life if they can manage their condition themselves. There's four main messages, and all of them are not just about the money. They're actually better for the individual as well. So the main one is have a healthy lifestyle. So eat sensibly, drink in moderation, give up smoking, take moderate exercise. All of those things will keep you as fit and healthy for as, as long as possible. Um, understand the Choose Well campaign. That will help you get the right care in the first place. Um, and avoid using A&E if at all possible. Um, take the time to understand your long-term condition and how you can manage it yourself if you're unfortunate enough to have one. And then finally, the message around the medication. If your GP is changing your medication to something that's more cost effective, he will be doing that and ensuring that it has no adverse impact on your health and he will work with you to understand that. But it will help the NHS take care of all the members of the community in the cost envelope that we have available to us.